entrance antiphon. The disciples devoted themselves with one accord to prayer with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brethren. Alleluia. Mass intentions this morning. In thanksgiving for the graces received through the intercession of Our Lady, for the needs of the Holy Mother Church and the suffering world, for Father Cecil Dowling on his 60th birthday, parish priest of retreat, for all those recommended to our prayers, for the repose of the soul of Benedict Partha, for the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners and for the reign of God's kingdom on earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we come this morning to give thanks to God for the gift of one another, the gift of life, especially as we await the gift of the Holy Spirit, as we await to celebrate Pentecost. We come to give thanks for to God for everything he has been to us. Most of the times we don't realize how gracious God is to us. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have celebrated the Paschal festivities may by your gift hold fast to them in the way that we live our lives. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with a soldier that guarded him. After three days, he called together the local leaders of the Jews, and when they had gathered, he said to them, Brethren, though I had done nothing against the people or the customs of our fathers, Yet I was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. 
When they had examined me, they wished to set me at liberty because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with his chain. And he lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ quite openly and unhindered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The upright shall behold your face, O Lord. The upright shall behold your face, O Lord. The Lord is in his holy temple. The throne of the Lord is in heaven. His eyes behold the world. His gaze probes the children of men. The upright shall behold the face of the Lord. The Lord inspects the just and the wicked, the lover of violence he hates. For the Lord is just and loves deeds of justice. The upright shall behold his face. The upright shall behold your face, O Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. I will send the spirit of truth to you, says the Lord. He will guide you in all, into all the truth. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Peter turned and saw following them the disciple whom Jesus loved who had lain close to his breast at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. The saying spread abroad among the brethren that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die. But if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is bearing witness to these things, and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are, so many, there are also many other things which Jesus did where every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Yes, That's very good. We give thanks to God. I want to tell you the story about cell phones. You know, those of you who are born before me, mm, <laughs> you know that cell phones are a new thing to the world. So in the old days, if you want to tell a lie, you have to go, you have to wait until you prepare yourself to say, I'm going to, to visit uh, France where my sister stays or my brother stays. So if you want to go and do gossiping, 
you have to go to France and gossip. And then they brought, they introduced cell phones. Then cell phones started in just like something you can use to call and text the message. No cameras, no cameras. There were no cameras. Then they said, ah, we should introduce cameras. So you start taking selfies, chup, chup, and then you send it. Then all other forms of communication started appearing, like Facebook. But you, you, you are using that, the cell phone. You have Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter, and whatever other things. So lies started spreading so fast. Within a second, poop, it goes to France. From France, poop, to America. Poop, to England. And then it comes back to South Africa. That's the cell phone. Now there was a, a, a lady who was complaining in church. She went to the parish priest and said, I am going to stop coming to church because people are telling lies even in church. They are busy on their cell phones. Boop, they send the message. Before, before mass finishes, someone who is outside knows what, is, what has happened. In the, during mass. So the priest said, okay, is that why you want to stop? He said, yeah, people are not paying attention. They don't listen to the priest. They don't do what, they, when the phone rings, they walk out and they come back again. So I, it's better I don't come to church. Then the priest said to the woman, okay, mm, uh, on Sunday, you come and see me before I start my homily. And she said, all right, you want me to stand in and come to, to you? And the people will be looking at me. And he said, yes, you come. So she went one Sunday. The priest took the, the glass of water and gave to the woman and said, you know what? I want you to walk around the church, but don't spill any drop and bring the cup back to me with water as it is. So the lady started walking slowly, carefully, focusing on the, on the glass so that she doesn't, the, the, drop, the, the water doesn't drop until she came back and she gave the priest the glass of water. So the priest asked, tell me, how many people did you see today who were on the cell phones uh, chatting uh, or going out? And then the, the woman said, no, Father, how can I see them? You gave me the glass of water and I was concentrating on, on the water so that it doesn't drop. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, two things happen today. The first one is that Peter in the gospel concentrates on looking back, seeing the other disciple and he's saying, what about this one? What is he doing here? And Jesus uses one phrase, follow me. Don't worry about him. Don't concentrate on him. Just follow me. Focus on me. Most of the times we concentrate much on looking at what others are doing. We forget about ourselves and the mission God has given us. We forget that our calling is to focus on him who has called us. Not only listening to the gossips others are saying about others, the stories about others, what others are doing in the church, whether they are eating bubble gums or they are chewing what or what they are doing what, but to concentrate on him who gives us the mission all the time. To, for, to forget about anything that distracts us, to focus on him who wants his good news to be spread, 
like we see Paul doing. A few weeks ago, you remember uh, the Lord appearing to Paul that now you have evangelized this side, it's your time now to go to Rome. And today Paul is in, is in Rome. But jailed. But he never lost focus. He went and evangelized to the Jews who were in Rome. They listened to him and he, he asked them to concentrate on spreading the good news. This morning, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we reflect on our very own selves, our lives, we ask ourselves, in what ways am I going to be active in spreading the good news? What role am I going to play in the society? Am I going to focus on the distractions from others? Or I'll look at the Lord and move forward. And may the Lord, who is constantly calling us to follow him, be with us. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit coming near, we pray, O Lord, prepare our minds for the divine sacrament since the Spirit himself is the remission of all sins through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, 
in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen Breslin, our Bishop, Sylvester is auxiliary, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us save them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters, especially Benedict Partha, who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and martyrs and with Saint Joseph and with all the saints we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the earth. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the earth. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the earth. Have mercy on us.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. That you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be. The body of Christ. Amen. 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 Amen. Communion antiphon, the Holy Spirit will glorify me, for he will take from what is mine and declare it to you, says the Lord. Alleluia. Let us pray. (laughs) 
Hear in your compassion our prayers, O oh Lord, that as we have been brought from things of the past to new mysteries, so with former ways left behind, we may be made new in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. Wishing you a lovely day and uh, may you celebrate Pentecost in style and remember to pray for us. I wish I could come and see how you will be celebrating the Pentecost, but it's fine. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.